My view tonight is on the growing spate of carnage on Ghana's roads and our appalling attitude on the whole matter. On Monday, March 9, 2020, Ghana woke up to yet another sad and troubling news item related to carnage on our roads. As much as 30 lives had perished on the Kintampo Tamale Road following a road crash between two commercial buses. Now that ghastly crash has been linked to human error. Authorities say one of the drivers involved in the accident had dozed off. Sadly, this is not the first serious crash recorded this year, which is just three months in. On Tuesday, the 14th of January, 2020, as many as 35 people perished in a road accident at Dompoise near Elmina in the central region just two weeks into the new year. For some of you, this unfortunate incident is not surprising considering the alarming statistics available on road accidents in the country. The surge in road crashes have reached such alarming rates, making it our biggest killer in Ghana. In essence, you are most likely to die on Ghana's roads than contracting a disease. Between 1991 and 2018, Ghana lost as much as 46,000 people to road crashes. In 2018 and 2019, over 4,000 people lost their lives on Ghana's roads. This figure is close to the number of people who have been killed by the coronavirus globally, which has been declared a pandemic. But if you think this is not alarming enough, let me break down the available statistics for this year covering January and February. For just these two months, 393 people have been killed across the country through road crashes, 222 in January and 171 in February. And these are just reported cases. These are not just statistics. These are precious human lives, lives of loved ones, but really, what is leading to these crashes? Three issues appear to be the main reason why we are in this state. One, poor road infrastructure. Two, human behavior. And three, enforcement of road regulations on the part of authorities. Let's look at poor road infrastructure. Now, on the 1st to the 7th of March this year, I was part of about 200 people who were embarked on a road trip across Ghana via City FM, City TV's Heritage Caravan. Sadly, what I discovered using the roads during the day and at night was that the majority of our roads lack any form of road furniture, from street lights, road markings, guideposts, safety barriers, and road signs. And oh, the potholes, narrow roads, what a nightmare. One of the roads I use that I can't get over is the Sunyani Wenchi Highway. That long stretch has no street lights, markings, safety barriers, just nothing, and has been like that, I'm told, forever. Driving at night on that road is simply a nightmare. This particular road keeps recording crashes and robberies. And of course, those in charge are too busy with other things to deal with these matters. Now let's look at human behavior and law enforcement. Inappropriate speeding and recklessness, reckless driving have been identified as two of the major risk factors that result in fatal road crashes in Ghana. And the majority of us are guilty of these two things. In May of 2019, City FM and City TV began a campaign to check in discipline on our roads, picking particular places that are notorious with such incidents. Unfortunately, immediately road enforcement officers leave these places, vehicle owners go back to flouting road traffic regulations. For how long will we continue doing this to ourselves? We have come to the point where, as a country, we need to take drastic measures to stop this. 
if we want to reduce the increasing number of fatal accidents on our roads, there are a number of things we have to do. One, we must, as a country, invest heavily in the development of road infrastructure. Basic road furniture like street lights, road markers, guideposts, safety barriers, and road signs cannot be absent on our roads if we want people to arrive alive at their destinations. Two, contractors who embark on shoddy work must be punished to deter others. Three, we have to also immediately dualize our major roads if we want to reduce such crashes. Four, we must strictly enforce road traffic regulations and sanction people who flout rules without fear or favor. Five, authorities must consider inculcating new rules that have been tried and tested in other jurisdictions that have worked, including banning the use of only one driver for long journeys by commercial transport operators. And finally, we must also look at the pros and cons of allowing commercial drivers to drive at night and take a decision on the way forward. This has been Vivian's View. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. Thank you for watching what the papers are saying. Goodbye.